Hi, and welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren, welcome back. We are talking in this video about photography fair use. This is a big case that came out of the Eastern District of Virginia. I've got it up here, loaded up for you if you wanna check out the case. This was basically a motion for summary judgment. This was a photographer who had created a time-lapse photography from, of the Washington DC sort of skyline. And basically it had a nice picture of, of this area in Washington DC and, and I think it was the Capitol building in the back. So it was a really, to me it was a really nice photo. Um, and basically the photographer found his photo on another company's website, the Northern Virginia Film Festival site up on the things to do page. So the photographer saw the photo um, I, I think, imagine he contacted his attorney and said, what do I do? They sent the cease and desist letter. The um, company which was running the Northern Virginia Film Festival is right here, the defendant, Violent Hughes Productions, kind of an interesting name there. Violent Hughes Productions was the defendant, Russell Bramer, the plaintiff. So this was um, a case where immediately when the defendant um, learned of the cease and desist letter, they took down the photo. And so this happens a lot in photo infringement cases um, where you get a cease and desist letter or an, an infringement notice, copyright infringement, and you go and immediately take down the photo. But the plaintiff says, well, you know, I still have a copyright. There's a copyright in my photo whether or not it, you see the copyright symbol. And in this case, in fact, there was no copyright symbol. And it was just a picture that was found on the internet. And so this was the case uh, that comes up a lot. A lot of people don't realize that images and you know, basically almost, almost anything creative on the web automatically has a copyright. And most people don't know that. Why? Because you don't learn it in school, you don't learn it in high school, you don't learn, they don't teach it in college unless you have a business law course, but a lot of people don't even take that anymore. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where this is what will trigger a copyright infringement notice from a law firm. So the plaintiff, or excuse me, the defendant, this is a, was a motion for summary judgment. This was the defendant arguing fair use that my use of this photo, which was cropped, they took the actual photo that was, was done by the photographer and they cropped it into a little section so that they could show um, you know, some things to do in Washington, D.C. So it was like a three panel picture with three different strips on it. So um, <laughs> the uh, defendant said this is fair use. This was a motion for summary judgment to dismiss the case on fair use grounds, and the judge um, issued this opinion, also, um, essentially finding fair use. And in this matter, the court did what a court is supposed to do, weigh all four factors, and I'm gonna scroll through this really slowly. If you wanna read the factors, it's in here. I'm gonna let you do that on your own if you wanna read it. But essentially, the court analyzed, I'm gonna give you the nutshell, of the um, decision, the court analyzed the four factors and said, you know, as to the nature and character of the use, the court sort of um, alluded to the fact that the photograph was more factual than creative. So believe me, photographers are up in arms about this. Um, some plaintiff counsel lawyers are up in arms about this and, you know, um, it's one of those things that's going to be contested. It's going up right now. In fact, an appeal has been filed. But to the as to the photo, the judge said this was more factual than creative. Creative works um, are going to get a lot more protection than would something factual or you know very informational in under copyright law. So um, I think that got everybody up in arms. Number one. Um, the court said that the photo was cropped, so only the little amount that was needed was actually taken, and only enough to express the point of view that the defendant was trying to do, which was to show you, hey, Washington, D.C. is a fun place. You come to the film festival. It was on this things to do page. Here, you know, here's all the things to do. So the court sort of found that to be a... Um, transformative in function and purpose. 
So that has a lot of people up in arms. They're saying transformative, you know, transformative needs to really transform the photo, not just, you know, use it and crop it. I mean, just cropping it's not, you know, necessarily um, transformative in nature. If you just take a photo and you shrink it down a little, I mean, that's not necessarily transformative. So that's got people up in arms. Um, the court said that the use, even though it was on a film festival, uh, Northern Virginia Film Festival website, obviously the film festival charges tickets, they want to make money, right? But the court looked at that factor and said, well, this is kind of um, non-commercial, really, because the photo was not used to generate revenue, but was merely just trying to be more informational. So that's got everybody up in arms on the for use, the fair use factors. And the court also found that there was really no harm to the marketplace for the plaintiff's photo. And I guess I, guess I see that um, to a degree, but you know, when you find, a, what a photographer, when you find your stuff all over the internet, and believe me, we represent plaintiffs as well, and you go out and, you know, it's like whack-a-mole. They're trying to stop all these people from taking your photo. So um, that's an interesting point of view that has people up in arms. And there was some, a little bit of conversation. I'll keep moving through this in case you want to read it. There was a little conversation about, you know, there was really no effort to market the um, photo by the photographer, although he had, he had previously licensed the photo and since uh, he noticed the infringement, there were also um, two other licensing uh, uh, deals that he did. So, um, so there was, you know, some some licensing going on apparently, and the court seemed to find it interesting that there was um, that the photo was previously published online. That seemed to be a factor that it sounded like as early as maybe it was 2012 that this photo had been posted online and um, there wasn't a copyright symbol. Again, not that there has to be, that's not a requirement under the law, but most people don't know that. You know, most people don't go to copyright college and, you know, learn that if, you know, people think that if they find it online, it's free to use, but that's not the case. You know, you have to assume when you find something online that it's owned by somebody, that somebody has the copyrights to it, whether or not it's registered, that's a whole nother story that we'll talk about on another video. But overall, the court weighed the four factors, and I'm just going to go down here. As you can see, here's the four factors while we're here. Take a peek at it. Um, I'm not going to read them and go into that. You can if you're interested. But the court weighed each of the factors, and talking about transformative use, commercial purpose. Um, again, this is in the Fourth Circuit. So it talked about the factors and the use of the photograph was transformative in function and purpose. Uh, while the photographer's purpose in capturing and publishing the photo was promotional and expressive, Violent Hughes' purpose in using the photograph was informational to provide festival attendees with information regarding the local area. So um, furthermore, this use was non-commercial because the photo was not used to advertise a product or generate revenue. So it's really, uh, it's a, uh, it's a case that really kind of has everyone up in arms. And, um, but for now, this is what it is. Now, it's not, it's just so you know, um, it's a district court decision. So it's not really, it's not legal precedent. It's just, it's just a case that was heard at a trial court level. There was, um, and you can see here, furthermore, the scope of fair use is broadened when a copyrighted work has been previously published. So there's a lot of talk about the four fair use factors. It's only seven pages, so if you want to read it, um, you should go through and read this here. And, you know, that's the decision of the court. So we'll find out. Uh, an appeal was filed uh, in July, so we will find out. It depends how long it takes to get through the court systems, but there it is. For the foregoing reasons, this court finds that summary judgment should be granted in favor of the defendant. Order shall issue Judge Claude M. Hilton. There's your decision, folks. So we'll keep an eye on that. Like I said, um, big, big news in the area of fair use law. And again, this may be used in software, music, videos, films, things that you find online, even though you don't see a copyright symbol. So if you end up getting that cease and desist letter, you need some help, 
you're facing a, an infringement action, you need to assert the fair use defense, there it is. Give us a ring. You can find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. Copyright Watchdog will keep an eye on this case for you, and we'll be reporting back as soon as we hear some more information. Thanks a lot. Have a great evening.